Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing some kind of fun, something you don't see very often. We're gonna set the intake center line of our camshaft, which normally you don't have to do because it's already done. The internet calls it degreeing in your cam. Degreeing in your cam. But really that's all we're gonna do is set the, the intake center line. <laughs> so we're gonna explain to you guys what the intake center line means, how you find it, what it means in relation to your engine. And we're gonna degree the cam. And this is the new engine I'm building for the Cummins car right now. Hoping to go uh, pretty powerful on this guy. So let's get started. So first thing we got to do is what? Find top dead center of the motor? Yeah, we need to get top dead center because intake center line is set relative to top dead center. So our first step, we're going to set a degree wheel and zero it at top dead center of the engine. The best way to do that is this handy bridge tool. We're just going to run a piston up until it reaches the highest height, and that's top dead center. And since you're all set up on one, we're probably going to do it on six. Because it's a companion cylinder. Which is the same. When number six is up, one is off. All right, so I need to set a few things up here so we can start boring the crank over. I need to put my adjustable gear on. This is pretty, like, not normal, but it's very cool. This is a straight cut setup here. So once I get this gear on here, I'll kind of be closer. Come here, you. There, you go. there we go. Okay, now that's on, I'm going to put on the dampener so we can actually bar this thing over. You have a PVD magnetic degree wheel. So I'm going to bar here, and the wheel is going to go back there and get us the top dead center. So what we're going to do is go a little bit before top dead center, a little bit after top dead center, and split the difference because there's dwell time. We're kind of sticks to the highest for a couple degrees. We want to get right dead at top dead center. So tell, I'm going to go, you ready? Well, yeah, you're just going to go to measurement on that, the same measurement, okay. stop and I'll tell you. I'm going to go to 40 on that thing, I'm going to go down to 40. So what I did is I moved this little degree wheel that's on the back of the crank. I moved this to TDC when we were close. He just moved it to 40 thousandths before and it moved to five. Now go the other way. If this goes to five the other way, then we are exactly at TDC. Looks like it went to about five and a half degrees. Hey, so I was- That's 40 right there. Yeah, five and a half. So I was a quarter of a degree off. So instead of it being perfectly at five and perfectly at five, you can see how it's a little bit past five. So I'm just gonna move the wheel a little bit so that it thinks it's at the perfect amount. Let's go back to the other again, back to 40 yep. again. Now go to top dead center on that, and I'll stop him when he gets right here to zero, and we'll be, whoop, he went too far. Back a little more, a little more, a little more, right there, oh, went too far. Right there, right there. That's where I'm showing, are you showing there? Yeah. Okay, so now that the degree wheel is perfectly at top dead center, and like I said, what Todd said is it's really hard to stop exactly at the top, so if you stop when the piston's on its way up, using a dial indicator, he stopped, what? 40 thousandths. 40 thousandths before. We made a mark, or I checked on the, the degree wheel, it was five degrees before. Then he went up, past, and then 40 thousandths back. Halfway between those two is perfectly top dead center. And it's a lot easier to center your degree wheel when the piston is moving a lot. Because if you're off just a little bit, you saw me, I was like, oh, oh, too far. It's a lot easier. And, and to be honest with you, if you're within a degree, it's close enough for what we're doing here anyway. Yeah. But we got it within like a quarter of a degree. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the engine and we want to see where the center of the intake lobe is. So on the cam, you have intake and exhaust lobes. So inside here, there's a cam with these lobes that spin. They lift a lifter and then they push the push rod up. So he's got a dial indicator on the push rod. So he's going to right now just go until he gets the highest reading there. That's really close to the intake center line and we're gonna see if we're halfway close. All right, so right now the engine's a top dead center. What intake center line means, if he didn't, if Will didn't already tell you, is when the engine's 100 degrees past top dead center, that's the tip top of your intake lobe. The very top, it's like top dead center of your number one cam intake lobe. So we're gonna set the engine at 100 degrees past top dead center on our dial back there. And then we're gonna put this same way before and after at the very tip top of that number one intake lobe. If this was a stock cam gear, you would just bolt it together, line up the dots, and you would just turn the engine and see where that is. But since this is all adjustable, there's no way to really tell where you're at. We're just gonna 
inadvertently move the cam to the top. We're gonna move the engine to 100 where it should be roughly, and then we might have to jump a tooth or something if you can't bolt the cam gear together there. Yeah. So, so if you come over here, we're just gonna to go to 100 degrees clock. So he's going, so now this is the bigger number since we're on the back, it's back with a small number. So 10, 20, well, he's at 20 now. So keep going, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. So see how the number started over? It gets to 90 and goes under. So it's a little confusing on degree wheels, but we started right here at 100. In fact, it looks like it slacked back slightly and it has fallen to about 99 and a half now. That's close enough for what we're doing now. Okay, so he's going a little more, going 101. You ready? Yep. A little more. As, right, now you're at 100 and a half. That's 101 right there. Okay, so you can see how, how far down the piston is in the bore. Take a look at this right here. So this is where the piston is when the intake valve is fully open. It's pretty far down. So now he's putting these cutoff bolts, low profile head. So it can actually fit behind the cover. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just gonna tighten down one or two of them. And then we're actually going to turn the crank and see where intake center line is. So we're really close to 101, but to be honest with you, the gear lash stuff, we might be off by one or two degrees. Yeah. We're gonna find out real quick. No. No, we've lost that. We gotta get it again so we can actually torque these things. You can make that one into it in about yeah. three seconds on the lathe right there. Yeah. I guess you're not going that tight yet. All right, cam gear is locked to the cam, which is now on the crank. So as we spin the crank around, we can verify stuff. So now that it's there, we're gonna do the same process we used to find TDC, except we're not touching the degree wheel. I'm just gonna tell, call out the degrees I see. So Todd's gonna to go a little bit before and a little bit after peak. Usually guys go 40 or 50 thousandths, because mm -hmm. basically they're measuring either side of the peak and halfway between is the intake center line for the center of that peak. Yep. So you're gonna back the engine up because you wanna go the direction the engine is yep. rotating because that takes all the lash out. So he's gonna go back further than he needs to go. Okay. And he's, he's gonna measure as it comes up to 50, he's gonna tell me to check what degree it is. He's gonna go past, and then on the way back down when it catches 50 again, that's what I'm gonna tell him the other degree, half of between those two degrees is the intake center. So you can see right now he's at 55. That's 50. Okay, so that's 50 thousandths before. So looking straight on, you're at 55, 56, 57 and a half. Now come over here, Luke. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up to peak and back down to 50. And he's into that thing. So we can go up to peak here. That's right there's peak. We'll go back down to 50 on this dial indicator. 50. Looks like 147 and a half. Right by two, you're at 102.5 intake center line. 102.5 is what it ended up at. So we can decide, is that what we want? Do we want to, re that's probably a little- It's a little bit advanced. retarded. Retarded? Uh-huh. We had issues with this cam kissing exhaust valves last time. So let's, uh, I think we should back it down more like 101. Okay. So we're gonna uh, do that. Let me loosen the cam. Cam bolts. Okay, you ready? Uh-huh. There's one. And half. There's two. Okay, we tighten up the cam. All right, same procedure. He's going to go to 50 before and after. I'm just going to call the numbers on the degree wheel. Normally, the degree wheel is on the front, so you can see what you're doing. But this is special. It's teamwork makes the dream work. I don't know how you mount that wheel on this up here. Be hard. That, we'd have to make a special yeah. adapter that goes on a drive adapter up there, which is totally doable. 50. Okay, so you're at 55, I'd say in a quarter up, 55.25. Hold on, I'm actually a little bit proud. Let me, let me try this one more time. I think I'm a little bit too much. Give me one second here. Okay, 50. So you're like 55 and an eighth. Okay. That we're measuring in eighths, but. <laughs> That's what we're doing. I can do it. So we're doing it. Okay. All right, here we go. We go 
to peak lift and then back down to the same. Okay. You're at 145. You're at 100.06 degrees. Point, so right at 100. You're right at 100. You technically round to 101, just 100. barely. 100, is it 100.6 or 100.06? 100.06. So that's rounds to 100. Oh, to round to 100.1. Yeah, so it's 100. It's 100. So we got to go 101. We have the tools. We can do this. We want 101. All right. All right. You ready? Okay. More? It's a half. More? That's three quarters. That's a degree. Okay. Maybe ever so slightly under like 0. 0.9, which is exactly <laughs> what you wanted. Perfect. All right, here we go. Back to this. Okay. Fifty. Okay, and that's fifty-five and a half. Okay. Maybe fifty-five and five eighths. We'll call it fifty-five and a half, though. Okay, come going up to top, back down to fifty. Fifty. It's like one forty-five and a half. You're at a hundred point five. So we picked up. 0.5 degree, 0.44. So we need to go another half degree advanced on the cam. Yep. All right, you ready? I get it? Mm -mm, quarter, maybe. I'd say that's like not quite a half, like okay. three eighths or so. Right there. Just so you know, this tape trick, legendary. <laughs> it works so good keeping the valve straight. We did all kinds of stuff to keep the valve straight, and we got the tape. No more issues. We're doing that trick. We, well, we just, just figured it out. Yeah, like, well, because the push was floppy, right? Yeah. And so we were trying to figure out how to keep it straight. And I got a piece of tape to hold it. It's like, this works really good. So, anyway, oh, guide plate. Little tape works really good. 50. And now you are at 146 on the dot. So by two, you're at. 101.0625. So 101.1 is your average. All right, we're gonna call that one good. 101.1. <laughs> so now my cam is set to 101 degrees intake center line, which is good. So now that that's done, I can button the rest of the motor up. And uh, if I don't like how it runs, maybe I feel like, hey, it's a little bit sluggish on down low, I can advance it and that'll give me more low end power. Or if I want more top end, I can retard it, it gives me more top end power. Just kind of dial in your cam for what you want to do. Again, most of you guys are never going to have to do this because you have a keyway on your cam that indexes it to your hub. Or I guess it's just the camshaft itself, not even the hub. But they do sell offset keys. So you can go like a degree, a couple degrees, one way or another. If you want to try it yourself, you can do that. Um, or you can verify when you're building your engine that the cam is actually ground yes. on the correct intake center line. Because sometimes cams get off in the grinders and stuff. I mean, there's manufacturing tolerances. Yeah. There's stack up of clearance problems on the gears. I mean, you could be off. I've, I've had stuff off as much as like three degrees from what the manufacturer claimed. Wow. And we put a different gear set on there. And I came to find out that my crank gear has also slightly yes. sheared and moved a little. Yeah, there's so that was, valves. that was part of it. So uh, like I said, it's a good thing to check, but it's not common to cause issues. Yeah, so anyway, next time you see this engine, hopefully we're making a dang near, I don't know, 1750, 2000 horsepower with this bad boy. So uh, it's going to be coming to a track near you soon. This is a Hamilton competition block yes, too. which we had to make work. And I will say, I'm pretty excited about this. It's got a way thick deck up top, which is awesome. The bottom end, all the webbing is beefier. We had to do some clearancing. We had to do some special machining, which makes them kind of hard. But in the end, there's a lot more metal here. Like a lot of machine shops hate these blocks because they're hard to work with. But as a performance enthusiast, if it holds more power, Let's Double go. thumbs up. So, yeah, so we're excited to try it. Hope it makes some big power with this bad boy. So anyway, thanks guys. I hope this is interesting to you. Kind of learn what intake center line is, how to degree cam in. It's these words you are hearing probably. Maybe you didn't know what they were. Now you do. And anyway, hope you like the video. Subscribe. Tell your friends, share us, all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.